In this video, I am going to show you why you should buy an M1 MacBook Air in 2023. But it may not be for everyone, and some may prefer the M2 MacBook Air. So let's get into it and break it all down. First, if you are new here, welcome. My name is Evan, and this is the channel where I make weekly tech videos from reviews to should you buys and also the few tip videos. And if you enjoy, click in that subscribe button for more future videos. All right, so the MacBook Air was refreshed with Apple's own silicone in 2020. This brought the M1 chip to their base model laptop, which is a great way to get started in the Apple ecosystem. If you already own an iPhone or iPad, this computer is going to benefit you right out of the box. But with Apple releasing multiple models every year, and usually upgraded models every other year, or in some cases every year, it can be confusing to think that you may need the latest and greatest, but you may not. If you are the type of person that wants portability more than blazing fast performance, then the MacBook Airline should be right for you. You don't need to consider the Apple MacBook Pro line. The Airline is Apple's base model of laptop, and that almost doesn't give it the justice that it deserves. When you think of base models, you think of cheap, going to be slow, not the best parts, might only last me a year or two at best. But with the Air, you can toss those right out the window. With the recent upgrade to Apple Silicone, this has made an already pretty quick laptop into an even faster machine. Literally, there are tons of YouTube and content creators that run all of their channels and platforms from just a MacBook Air. So if you are the type of person that doesn't run their computer at 100% all of the time, then the M1 MacBook Air may be right for you. As CPU performance has definitely surpassed what most of us need on a daily basis, and most would require more RAM, which is your random access memory, than an upgraded processor as this is what stores everything that is running on your computer at that time, and your processor only handles what your memory gives it. So for the M2 Air with 8GB of RAM, or the M1 Air with 16GB of RAM, you definitely will benefit from the more RAM rather than the more processor. And since the M1 is $200 cheaper than the M2, and that $200 is what it costs to upgrade the RAM, then the upgrade to memory may be the better bang for buck for the majority of users. So let's talk about the design. One of the most important things on a laptop that most don't even think of until they actually use it is the keyboard. And Apple went through a period of time where they were testing new keyboards. These were the butterfly keyboards and good, they were not. Dust and debris were causing chaos in these keyboards, and laptops were just flat out breaking because of it. So with the M1 MacBook Air, Apple moved to the Magic Keyboard, back to the old types of switches and what worked for them, but with slimmer design. And from personal experience, this keyboard is great. I really enjoy typing on this keyboard as well with the M1 Air. It has a tapered or slanted design, which makes it even better for using while on a flat surface. Apple went to the more squared off design with the M2. And while this looks better to the eye, I do like the M1 design in terms of function. So there were a couple of design changes with the release of the M2 Air. The keyboard saw a slight change to the function key row. On the M1 Air, the function keys were more of a half key or a smaller key. With the M2 Air, these have been changed to a full-size key matching the rest of the keyboard. Nothing crazy, but something to definitely note. As well, the touchpad also grew in size, only a bit on the M2 Air, but is a little more substantial than on the M1 Air. And with the MacBook Air lineup, you only get two Thunderbolt ports on the left side of the laptop. So one will be needed for charging, which leaves you only one other port. I don't know about you, but when I am using this as just a laptop, I usually have nothing plugged into it. Most of my keyboards and mice have Bluetooth. So the ports don't really bother me, as when I'm at my desk, plugging into a Thunderbolt dock greatly expands everything, as they have all the ports needed when working at a desk. The only difference is that with the M2 Air, the addition of MagSafe charging 
has been added, which frees up one more USB port when away from the desk. But to me, it's not really necessary as I don't use both USB-C ports anyways. Now let's talk about battery life. Another great reason to buy the M1 MacBook Air is the battery. Apple says it is rated for 18 hours, and with multiple tests done on the internet, this can be confirmed. And I myself have never needed to push a laptop that long without having the ability to charge it. Even if you forget your charger for one day of full work, you can still easily get that day done and still have plenty left over. But if you have the absolute maximum battery is your main goal, then the M2 MacBook Air, which is rated for 20 hours, may be worth the extra $200 for you. Then by all means, go for it. Now let's move over to the display. The M1 MacBook Air has a fantastic display for its price range. It is a 13.3 inch retina display with a 2560 by 1600 resolution, 400 nits of brightness, a P3 color gamut, and a true tone display, which means that the display will adjust to the light in the room and will do its best to make sure the display looks its best depending on its environment. Comparable Windows laptops lack the resolution or even brightness found in this MacBook Air. Most Windows laptops at this price range come with a 1080p display, and as well, usually like 250 nits of brightness. As if these were used outdoors at all, these screens would be deemed useless. I'm not saying that 400 nits is fantastic, but it is definitely better, and this is something that is always underappreciated when buying a laptop, myself included, until this computer. But comparing to the M2 display, we do see a little bit of a bump in specs, as the M2 Air does achieve 500 nits of brightness, which helps it in those brighter rooms as well with the outdoor light. The M2 Air also sees a bump in color, whereas the display is a liquid retina display and can achieve that of 1 billion colors. Compare that to the M1, which is only 16.7 million colors and that does seem like quite a bump but really looking at both of the displays it is hard to actually notice the difference maybe in photo editing or color correction this may benefit you but again most will not need to consider the spec bump where it is more of a nice to have not a must have so again we need to decide whether this is worth the upgrade in price let's move on to the components now in the components department of the M1 MacBook Air, we see only a 720p webcam, which for most will be fine unless you are using this for certain recordings where you want better performance. But with Apple's recent changes to macOS, you can now use your iPhone as a webcam. So that may help you out in the end. But a bad camera in a good light will always be better than a good camera in a bad or no light. But the M2 Air does see a slight bump in camera specs and it does get bumped to a 1080p camera, so it does have a bit of a better resolution and a better sensor. So if a webcam is on the top of your list or needs, then you may lean towards the M2. If you already have an external webcam or using your iPhone is better, then saving some money on the M1 is a great way to go. Now, if we break down the actual differences in the M1 processor and the M2 processor, we will see that in single core performance, there is a slight bump in performance. Now, this is what the majority of users will experience most of the time, using the laptop to complete single tasks and such. And I would really be surprised if you saw a big difference here. Using these both in real life scenarios, both are going to be more than capable of handling the tasks. Now in multi-core performance, we see a larger jump in performance as the M2 has higher powered performance cores. But again, for the majority of users, the M1 will be more than capable of handling everyday tasks, especially if you make the upgrade to the 16 gigabyte version of the M1. And with recent hiccups with the M2 MacBook Air, more and more users are experiencing throttling due to the laptop getting hot. As well, the base hard drive in the M2 Air is testing much slower than that of the upgraded 512 gigabyte drive. So it seems that Apple have cut some corners to keep the price the same on the M2. The M1 has been out for three years now, and if there were any type of issues, they would have been found out by now. And they, they have not. 
So a good reason to go with the M1 over the M2 if you really want that stability. Now here is my recommended build. The base build of the M1 MacBook Air comes with a 256 gigabyte drive as well as eight gigabytes of RAM. This will be more than enough for the average user who browses the web, checks email, social media, and uses it for personal email. This will last you a good couple of years, but I do recommend upgrading to the 16 gigabytes of RAM, which will just prolong the life of the laptop and handle any extra tasks that you may want to throw at it. Maybe some photo editing, video editing, maybe. As keeping the 256 gigabyte drive is more than fine, as you can use cloud storage to offload large files that are not needed on a daily basis, or even carry a one or two terabyte drive that can be used to offload data as well. So the base price of the laptop is $9.99 and often can be found for less through either Best Buy or Amazon. Or you can keep an eye out for Apple refurbs, which you can get an even better price, but you are limited to the specs that it cannot be changed. Buying it new will allow you to spec it to the way that you want, but any upgrades to the base model, the prices are pretty much the same just about everywhere you look, which is $11.99. There it is. Those are my thoughts on the M1 MacBook Air and why I think you should purchase the M1 Air in 2023. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you next week.